Kofi, thanks for sitting down with me today. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Kofi, the uh, Crop Development Center at the University of Saskatchewan works on a number of different crops. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me a little bit about what you guys are working on right now and, and maybe how that fits into some of the global trends that we're seeing right now? We are working on most of the traditional crops, wheat, that's durum and uh, bread wheat, mm -hmm. uh, and also the CPS um, market class, a little bit into the general purpose class. Uh, we work on barley, on oat, flax, and four major groups of pulse crops, pea, lentil, dry bean, and faba bean. And, how, what? and those are chickpeas. Right, and chickpeas. Don't forget chickpeas. Yes. So I'll never let you hear the end of it. Right, so chickpeas as well. So how does that fit in? I mean, corn and soybeans, uh, is the demand increasing? I am not going to for sure say no, but I, I think there is. We, ha we are seeing an increase in demand for some of these other products. H how does that play into your decision on what crops to focus on? <laughs> Mainly on the market demand for our crops. Uh, in the case of, of the pulse crops, the major areas of consumption are still in, 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 the, in the sub you know, Indian continent, mm -hmm. in the Middle East. Uh, in South America, especially with respect to green lentils. And even we are beginning to see a pickup uh, domestically, and I mean North America, uh, because of some of the benefits you get uh, um, from the consumption of, of, of those crops. Uh, with regard to uh, wheat, it is still the largest um, green crop that people live on. And so the demand is never going to go away, even with the uh, discussion on uh, gluten uh, intolerance. There is still a wide array of, of, uh, of products that you can make. Barley, um, we see the growth of the craft brew industry that is offering a significant chunk of uh, opportunity into the future. Mm -hmm. And, and so, 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 so we are still oats. We have, we've had a historic agreement um, with uh, Quaker, which is now under PepsiCo, and they have shown renewed interest in investing uh, uh, in, 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 into oats. So we, we've got a host of factors that are, are driving that. Corn and soybean have got the technologies in, term, in terms of the production, utility, broadly, they will always be major crops. But I also think that the danger in having your dependency on a basket of two or three crops in, in case of uh, a massive uh, failure in any one of those crops uh, 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 makes it uh, um, or creates uh, the demand for these other minor crops if, if you compare them to the size of corn. Right, right. And so FAO has declared 2016 as the International Year of Pulses. In Canada, CDC drives most of the crop improvement um, efforts as it relates to pulses. How does, how does something like that help your organization? It does in, the, in, in, in terms of bringing focus back to to pulses. You have one year where the world will pay attention to a basket of crops that have been part of human de um, development. Uh, it helps people to understand more that apart from the nutritional benefits that they have, that these play vital roles in the production systems uh, in terms of uh, um, delivering benefits to the soil, uh, their energy requirements to grow a crop. It doesn't use uh, nitrogen in most of the cases. In, 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 on the prairies now, we've evolved um, rotations like lentil and durum and pea and wheat over a number of years, and, and, and farmers have, have, have seen uh, um, uh, the benefits of, of that. I think also that more research into utilization to how these products can be used and incorporated into ready-made foods is enhancing the potential to, 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 to have more demand outside of uh, um, the traditional areas. And also, the markets in India are growing. I, I mean, India has 
close to 500 uh, million people, depending on the estimate, who are obligate vegetarians. And their major source, source of, of protein is uh, our policies. And we don't think that in the long term, any country, including India, despite uh, a lot of investment being made, will be able to meet its pause demand from a, a domestic source. Right. So we will continue to offer a viable uh, uh, source. And, and then I think that it is the technologies. We've been doing policy since um, the 70s. And so we've got a good set of exemplarism. We have um, both the technical and the scientific um, uh, know-how to continue to provide um, what is needed to make them highly competitive as a crop, as a choice for our producers. CDC is, is known domestically and internationally to be the, the driver of this innovation. What, what can we look forward to coming down the pipeline? What do you see coming down the pipe? We, we still see yield gains mm -hmm. on, on, on an annual basis. We will see uh, deployment of technologies that help our producers to manage waste, for example. We will see enhanced um, uh, 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 trace for diseases. Mm -hmm. We will see products coming out with better nutrition or enhanced uh, nutrition. I don't know if we mentioned the last time about micronutrients, for example. Uh, increasingly, the way we are going to differentiate ourselves from our competitors is the ability to enhance more nutrition in the food so that people are taking in a product that they don't have to take a uh, um, multivice uh, after that. So we, it, it, is, it is a combination of the agronomic and the end use uh, um, uh, ability of, uh, of, of, the, of the seed. What we will also see is an increased demand for plant protein, and which means that people will be looking and, and I know that I will be looking at exploiting uh, uh, peas and, and fapa bean especially as a source of, of, of protein. Uh, by doing that extraction, you could get then the, the fractions, the starch and, and, the, and, and the protein being used in a variety of ways, enhancing uh, the ability to even use more of them in markets we do not have now. So we, we see that, we see the demand for plant protein as one of the key drivers of, uh, of uh, policies in the future. So we've got uh, the celebration uh, from that the FAO is declared. What, 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 how does the CDC celebrate something like that? It's time to sit back and, and, uh, and take stock. Take stock of the contribution of policies to the egg economy in Canada over the last 30 years. And I don't think it is insignificant. It is to look at what we have been able to do in collaboration with growers, with government, and with industry to take an industry from 10,000 acres to today close to 7 million mm. acres. And that occurred because of collaboration. And it is to, to look at what we can do when we pull our resources together and to see how we can advance that uh, kind of, of uh, endeavor into the future. It is also a time to look at the future and say, where will our major thrust be? Is it going to be solely in uh, plant protein? Is it going to be solely in our existing markets? Or could we uh, also bring in new classes of, 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 of policies to continue to diversify uh, our markets and, and, and provide uh, risk uh, um, mitigation so that our producers have a variety of policies to, to, to choose from, not just one or two for their uh, uh, locale. Right. Um, Kofi, I think it was back in 2000, 2012 when we last sat down and uh, CDC was doing some interesting work on um, evaluating some of the chromosomes in wheat. Can you tell us a little bit about where you're at with that? And well, that project is almost done. Okay. Uh, sooner, uh, very soon you will hear an announcement of a second phase to that. Okay. So I'm not uh, at liberty to disclose that, but it's a significant investment. Uh, we've learned a lot. We, we, today our breeders use more molecular data points uh, for 
some of the of the properties, whether it is disease resistance, some of the quality trees, some of the uh, agronomic trees, uh, implants, uh, straw strength, and all that, they are already beginning to deploy that. Uh, I would say that that has enhanced uh, the ability of our breeders to make uh, their selections much more efficiently than before that project started. And I do believe that the second phase will even unleash um, more capacity to be able to uh, know the uh, wheat um, genome much better to make uh, markers that are more specific. Uh, uh, I suspect that there might even be an attempt to actually uh, know the gene and maybe try to clone those genes so that you can deploy them uh, uh, at, a, at, at, a, at a higher rate of efficiency. Right. Can you explain a little bit more? What, what's that going to mean for what, what's that going to mean for farmers? What it means uh, for, for, for farmers is, um, you know, we have we will get the ability to incorporate a trait and have the assurance that the trait is actually in that plant mm -hmm. genome. So. Uh, is it going to mean lesser cost of development? No. But what it's going to mean to the farmers is uh, we can now have two or three traits that impact resistance to, to a particular disease and build durability. So if, if we know uh, we are doing a project now and, and, and what we've done is essentially look at all the um, available sources of resistance to a particular type of disease, there are about five, six of them, and we've been able to integrate all these into one plan. So that you are then building durability because if, even if one of the strains of the pathogen changes, there is still the ability for the plant to be able to with, uh, uh, um, withstand the others and, and, and therefore uh, are providing better resistance. New breeding techniques and and getting public acceptance to these new breeding techniques is is now one of the responsibilities of plant breeders. All of us have to take that that responsibility on. The International Seed Federation is is allocating dollars to just that topic. I think pretty much every association and every group is understanding that we have to have to have an impact on that. What role does the CBC play in, in helping to have the general public understand why these new breeding techniques are important and why they're employing them? One role we can play is to be part of the broader discussion, to be part of the discussion at um, CSTA. Last year, I had the privilege of attending um, a, a, a meeting at Iowa State, and it was on genomics traits and business, and was looking at how do we deploy the new um, breeding uh, techniques that they do not generate the reaction that genetically modified organisms got. Uh, I believe that by playing such roles, by being part of the discussion, uh, by continuing to elucidate that the science we are deploying is not alien it is it's, it's just enhancing our ability to incorporate traits that we've done for decades and even centuries by crossing. That's, it's, it's just an advanced form of doing uh, that. We are not introducing material that is harmful to the environment or harmful to, to people. I think as a public institution, we have a role because we are seen as maybe a fairer um, arbiter. Uh, uh, we are not solely driven by profit. In fact, we are not. Uh, uh, so I, I, I see an increased role in, for, for our scientists at conferences and in communicating with our stakeholders to continue to emphasize that all we are doing is looking at the genome and saying how do we take advantage of what's already in the plan to enhance our ability to produce cheaper food. Right. Well said. We've touched on some big topics. What else is going on over at CDC? Well, I think what I can emphasize is partnerships. Okay. Uh, if you look at the CDC and the host of partnerships that we have in research, uh, it would be hard to find a unit within any other public institution in Canada with that kind of reach. 
it is truly a success story of how different groups, for profit, producers, not for profit, government, other universities, other government agencies can pull resources together and harness each other's strengths and, and advance uh, a cause, and which is ultimately develop genetics that enhance the ability of our producers to grow and be competitive and also to supply a growing world with food. Partnerships will continue to be our, our, our mainstay into the future. We see, for example, the passage of Bill C-18. We are already talking to technology providers to say for a crop like flax, for a crop like um, fava bean, can you help us with some of your technologies into our germplasm? And because we might have a better mechanism now to get something back and share in your uh, investment. I see that opening up a lot more doors. Sometimes one plus one is more than two. It is indeed, it is indeed. Yes, that's great. Kofi, thanks very much again for sitting down. I appreciate your time. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure. I'll do that again.